Hi, how you doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with a very special guest. It is Mark Gein, the founder of Speak Easy. How you doing today, Mark? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Why don't we get off and start off a little bit about you telling us a little bit about Speak Easy. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, you can't really mention Speak Easy and, and start talking about that until you uh, understand where we come from, what we've done. Uh, so I'm a fourth generation BC farmer. Uh, my great grandfather came to the Okanagan uh, around the turn of the century. My grandfather took after him, my dad after him, and I'm taking after my dad. So we've sort of passed the family farm down. We moved up to the Rock Creek area uh, in 95, uh, bought a, a 2,500 acre ranch to grow ginseng, uh, and it's uh, we've stayed ever since. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it's it's a pretty cool lineage. It's, it's a lot of fun having that much knowledge in the family. Uh, pretty much any condition on any plant, someone in the family has some experience with it. So. Um, we uh, went through uh, an industry crash with, uh, with ginseng. Uh, they started doing production in China, which, uh, which uh, destroyed the market in North America. Planted cherries, uh, we, we were growing that up until last year, uh, and transitioned into cannabis in 2013. Uh, we were the 46th applicant under the MMPR. Wow. Uh, and uh, just have been battling with Health Canada ever since. We've seen uh, three regime changes and, and uh, the Cannabis Act and all that thing. We've been up to date on all of that. So it's it's been a, it's been a kind of a wild ride. But uh, in the interim, we were you know we were farming cherries and stuff. So uh, we feel that um, you know cannabis is just another crop. Like it's a special crop. It's an amazing thing, and it comes with more culture connected to it than any other crop you can grow. But it is essentially just a crop. So my parents, who somehow made it through the whole sixties without ever smoking. Um, <laughs> We're all over it just because it's wow. it's a, it's an exciting venture. It's another way of of, of uh, a, a, a cash crop. So I mean, we didn't have any stigma uh, attached to it. It was just it was just moving on to the next stage. So um, it, it's been great. It's been amazing growing with my family. My brother is by my side every day. I work with my dad. I've worked with him for 20, 20 something years now. So wow. it's been uh, it's been great. Um, and that that's sort of the beginning of Speakeasy. We look we look at the production processing of, of cannabis exactly the same as we would with with uh, cherries. Um, you know, you would you would grow a high quality crop. We, we were able to grow successfully in Rock Creek because it's a later um, uh, uh, season than the Okanagan. So the prices followed the the, the major times um, of harvest. So the the glut of the market, lowest price, Rock Creek, because it's on the furthest end of the scale, prices would always come up. And we got to uh, where the cherries are on the tree, 24 hours later, they're in Japan or China or East Coast of the United States. So logistically moving things through with the number of people, uh, the processing, cooling, hydro cooling, packing, shipping, and getting it over there within a 24 hour period is, is quite a feat. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of moving parts and we were able to take that and move it directly into uh, into cannabis production. Very so good. Now, I'm gonna ask you a quick question. So. What would you, you guys are craft growers, correct? Uh, we're craft growers at scale. So we take, we take that, uh, that, like you can't produce a high quality product without having someone that really knows exactly what they're doing on a mass scale because that person can only spread so far. Um, you know, it, you have to have that attention to detail, that, that hyper focus. So to be able to um, do that on scale, you need a whole bunch of people that uh, are able to have that skill set. You put two farmers in a room, you put a hundred farmers in a room, you're going to get a hundred different interpretations of how to do any job. Um, so getting two or three farmers all stepping all over each their, their toes, and it's a really difficult thing. So what we've done is, is uh, even though it's under one LP, we've made five distinct uh, LPs. So that's their wow. own show. They've, we've, we've built the facilities to their... Spec. Are they, sorry, are they subsidiaries within uh, the company? They're... they're individual so there's actually three separate buildings okay two of the buildings have two floors and then the first LP that we're licensed for now so uh, there will be a grower for uh, two build two of the buildings that have two floors will have two growers in them each um, and then uh, the the first LP will just will, will have the one so um, yeah it's essentially um, I don't want Health Canada to hear this but it will essentially be like four uh, or five separate uh, LPs wow. even though Speakeasy, the company, handles all of the compliance and they will be 100% compliant. But uh, So that allows each of those growers to pay hyper-focus to their craft growers. The rooms will be uh, 64 lights per room uh, in, in like eight separate rooms. So they're able to style it just like a craft grow, but on scale. Can I ask you a quick question? So I've spoken to private guys and I've spoken to public guys. The private guys are telling me that the reason that the public sector is having trouble is that they're trying to build these massive facilities, like you kind of mentioned, 
and it's really difficult to build these massive facilities and manage these huge groves. Whereas the private guys that have been doing small groves for years, like you said, they're farmers, they're experts, it's easier to manage these small crops than it is to manage these large crops. Do you think that's why we're starting to see this retraction in the sector because a lot of the bigger growers that spent a lot of money trying to be first movers have started to realize that they need to downscale in order to actually produce a quality product is this what you is is this what you think is causing this this reset in the sector do you think that that's the reason why we're having such a reset in the sector? So it's it's uh, it's a number of things. That's definitely one of them. Health Canada really herded us. They they steered us in a direction, uh, and then the public markets did the same thing. So you get these companies companies in. What investors wanted to hear is we're going to be the biggest. We're going to be the best. We're going to produce it the the uh, the most cheapest and the most. Yeah. So what that caused is all these guys to go. Wow. How can we build this so fast? Hey, let's throw up a greenhouse. So they threw up greenhouse, uh, which is far. Uh, um, uh, like growing indoors is, is far superior to growing in greenhouse. So now when we're at a, a position in the market where it's starting to become more competitive, you, it's like, it's not, you don't have to look into a crystal ball. You just have to look at Colorado and California and Washington State and Oregon to see what's going to happen in a mature market. And people don't want average. Um, a BC black market, if you're, if you're sitting on a, a, a pile of average material, you will sit on that pile forever. You're yeah, nobody more. wants it. Nobody wants it. There is too much good quality product. Good quality product doesn't cost any more than poor quality. Like if you're looking in a room, you have set costs. Cost of the facility, the, uh, the uh, power, um, uh, everything except for the final trim because you're going to have more in a room. Those costs are set. Those costs are consistent. And to grow a high quality product, which generally ends up with more pounds per square foot, you will end up with a cheaper product than garbage. So if you can't do it properly, if your facility is not set up to be able to handle, um, to, to give these farmers the best chance to do it, so aka a greenhouse versus indoor, you're going to lose. Like There's just no real way around it. So with Health Canada forcing us into uh, the regulations that they put out, with the public markets forcing us to you know, be the best, be the best, be the biggest, uh, it, it created this massive pile of... of uh, a bubble, essentially. It was a bubble, bubble that burst, right? And it's unfortunate, but it's true. Yeah. So what, what makes you guys different? Are you guys going to be able to have better competitive pricing and a higher quality product? Is that what's going to make Speakeasy rise to the top so when we when we originally got into it the pipe dream was like maybe someday they'll be able, we'll be able to grow outdoor so outdoor in rock creek is just it's uh i mean i hate i hate it when people come and say best biggest dominate anything like that but it is a phenomenal area to grow like it's been that area and right through to nelson have been uh the backbone of bc's weed market for wow. 50 years like oh, a wow. long time so the, we know the strains that work there we know uh, the exactly the conditions we can expect so it's really dialed in uh, not many places around Canada have that same can anywhere east of the Rockies you know um, uh, anywhere east of probably Nelson you start getting into areas where you're not gonna be able to grow outdoors you get too far to the coast and it's too wet uh, so this is little green zone a beautiful spot ours is called the golden mile the area from Asuyas up to OK Falls uh, is uh, intensive uh, farming and just perfect condition wine country kind of thing we're just over the hill a little bit up uh, um, but it's just an absolutely outstanding area so our cost of production to produce a finished gram uh, of outdoor is four cents a gram Woo, that's the lowest I've ever heard yeah and it's, it's oh, four cents a gram wow it's a that's amazing it's, it's a, like Holy we expect to pull off 50,000 pounds next year at four cents a gram wow. and then have another 120,000 pounds of biomass and that comes in for distillate about four hundred eighty dollars a kilogram. Right now, it's selling for about uh, fifteen to eighteen thousand. Um, but I mean, if you look down the states, price for isolate has come from you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars down to about three thousand. Crazy. 000. Yeah. But Crazy. At two thousand dollars a kilogram, we can uh, a multiple of four uh, profit side. I mean, it's it's just they they talk about uh, Colombia. They talk about you know, producing all these cheap areas, but because we're able to mechanize and because of our proprietary uh, extraction methods, you can't produce it any cheaper than you can down here. And then they're also faced with the cost of, of shipping and entrance tax and all that other stuff. So for our, um, for our extracts, it's going to be tough to beat us anywhere in the world. That's really impressive. Are you guys only focused in Canada? Are you guys looking to expand internationally? What's your guys' plan right now? Our plan is to... Um, we need to build a street cred, right? We Totally. You can't build it off marketing because there's no marketing. You can't fool people by producing crap product. We want to grow the best, best product in the world. Great. And we want to own 
BC, and then we want to own Canada, and then we want to move everywhere else. But it's all going to be based on our reputation. It's not going to be because we beat down somebody or have more money of them. It's because people want our product, and that's our plan. So we've got to start in BC. And if you can be respected in British Columbia, uh, you're doing pretty well because it's a tough market out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, this is the market in Canada and really the market in the world when it comes to cannabis. Absolutely, right? yeah. It's in, sh it's in shambles right now because yes. of what's going on, but we're not the only guys that are gonna do this. There's other fantastic growers yeah. that are small right now that will come in, but anybody that produces like we're going to or some of the other guys, they can instantly take off the shelf whatever else is out there. Like their gram will displace anybody else's gram. Are you familiar with Gary Varnachuk? Uh, no. The large social media guy, Gary, Gary okay. V? Oh, yeah, 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 Gary okay. V, yeah. Gary V is a huge cannabis enthusiast. Mm -hmm. What he said is that the cannabis sector reminds him of the tech sector exactly and the guys that are gonna be the best may not have even entered into the market yet exactly and that it's just the early stages and he believes that it's not even the first inning he yeah. said that we're not even in the first inning we're not even throwing out the first pitch yeah yeah so a lot of people are throwing money at this thinking they're gonna get rich overnight but the real money is gonna come in for the people that are strategic yeah that are patient yeah that wait for the biggest and the best to really evolve yep. and then that's going to be the opportunity to hit it exactly so it's really the next five ten years yes and it's right now is kind of it's kind of like uh everyone's racing to be first but really they're racing to be first to blow all their money yeah right isn't that what's happening right now so a lot of that is is in the public market right so the guys would every week because you have you have shareholders we're a public company as well so yeah I mean, you have shareholders just like what's going on now we haven't heard from a week so of course you have to generate this news and so they would be constantly looking around for something that uh, they probably wouldn't do if they had time to think about it and had the patience of the market but because everyone's jamming everything down your throat and you, you, you have to get something done a lot of these big companies that have been in it for a while have just made um, errors because they've been forced because well, they were first everyone's gonna love this yeah. it's gonna make our stock pop and then we can do this so they'll yeah. buy some asset in Colombia that's never gonna go anywhere <laughs> I've heard those stories yeah my goodness and you know it's funny Aurora cannabis is everywhere yep. yet they may go bankrupt, right? This is what everybody's saying. Yet their product is everywhere, and then Canopy Growth has tons of money, but from what I hear, their product is not that good. So it's kind of funny that you got two of the biggest in the world yep. that were first movers, one who's everywhere in Aurora and has a lot of big branding and is on every shelf across the country, but yet, they're running out of money. And then you got this other giant in Canopy Growth who's got Drake, they've got Snoop Dogg, they've got Martha Stewart, they got Seth Rogen, they've got all this great branding, they got all this money, but yet nobody likes their product. Yeah. This is what we kind of find in the cannabis sector. So I believe there are opportunities for companies like yourself. 100%. To rise above this. We, and, have, to, uh, we have to be able to compete with the black market. Totally. Canada's black market is probably the highest quality uh, in the world. I mean, Absolutely. We are competing against a group that is unregulated, uh, that is uh, far cheaper because they don't have to do certain things, uh, and they can go wherever they want as quick as they want. You want to expand today? Fine. Go down to the grow shop, buy some stuff, let's go. They don't pay tax. They don't pay tax. They don't pay the government. They don't pay the government. However, they do pay massive surcharges for transportation, yeah. keeping things quiet, and yeah, I guess uh, so. stuff like that. So there is a bit of And a they trend. get busted, and they lose their crops, exactly. and then they got to start over. Exactly. I mean, for us to put up a light, with Health Canada involved is a month long process, at least, probably multiple months. If you're looking for any amendment, doing anything at all, Health Canada is is uh, is working on a, the devil's coming to town and we want to protect all the people and they're mandated to do so. So they start out with like the most extreme thing first and then walk it back if, if they find out they're a little bit wrong. Like the the um, the vaults that we had to put up. Uh, ours is uh, uh, eight inch thick, steel reinforced, single pour concrete walls with seismic detectors and motion detectors and cameras and all that stuff. And, our security guy was literally like putting the last screw in a panel wow. and we got an email from Health Canada saying, you know that whole vault thing? Nah, just go ahead and not do that anymore. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it can be a bit brutal work. So, okay, so I know we've been doing this for quite some time and you're going to be busy and I'm going to be busy so I'm going to let you go pretty soon. For an investor, why would they want to invest in Speakeasy? Um, so, I mean, I, I never do a pitch. Like, I, I've sat in front of a thousand investors. I, I never do a pitch. What I do is just sort of talk about what we're up to and what we're doing. Comparing it to the rest of the market, I mean, you really need to be an investor in this. You really need to understand who the customers are. And, and most of the companies don't seem to even understand that. So 
you, if the ones that are going to succeed in Canada are ones that have products that people will want to buy. That's yes. first. If you don't have that, nothing else you do is going to work. Absolutely. You have to have some competent people that are doing that um, uh, uh, to, to run with that. So, I mean, that's in BC, we're spoiled because we have access to so many amazing growers and so much technology, and it's been the, 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 the cutting edge for a long time here. So, they should invest in Speakeasy because of our land package, because of our unique place to grow outdoor, because of our, uh, our fully uh, integrated, like we're going from seed uh, soil to oil, as they call it. Um, uh, we have the land, a 290 acre package, with uh, we're up to about 100,000 square feet now. Um, so I, it's 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 going to be us and companies like us like us that are the going to be the survivors. Uh, most of these big ones, uh, I mean, I'm not wishing them ill will, but I just cannot see a place for them in the future. So it'll be companies like us. We've been in this a long time. I'm probably the most stubborn person you've ever met in your life, and I live right beside that facility, so nothing goes on there without me knowing about it and yelling at somebody. So um, yeah, I, I just think that we will be here for for the long haul. So that's what we need to look for in first. That's fantastic. Well, you know what? We wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. And hopefully we can do this again soon. This is Mark Gein, the founder of Speakeasy. We wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. This is Rich from Rich TV Live, and we'll talk to you soon.